In this video, we're going to look at the properties of logarithms. So you're probably familiar with the product rule. We saw it in the last classwork problem. If I have the log of two things that are being multiplied together, you can just take the log of each individual thing. So the log base b of r and the log b base b of s and add them together. There's a similar property for division inside of the log which becomes subtraction when you expand it. And finally, there is one um, called the power rule, which tells us that if you have a power inside of the log, the exponent can come to be the front, to be in the front of the log. And uh, there is a change of base, which we won't be using all that often because your calculator has a fa fancy feature. But it tells us that if I have an expression like that, I can just take the common log of r the common log of b and divide them together and I will get the right answer. I can also take the natural log of r and the natural log of b and divide them together and I should get the right answer as well. But we won't be needing those because your calculator actually allows us to do something. But before we get to that, a little shout out from our family here. It looks very happy. He must have been studying some logs in the gym. Um, if we look at our calculator, one thing I can do is if you press the math button and you scroll all the way to the bottom, log base allows us to type in a base, so like 5. And then um, I can take the log of 19 and I get 1.829. Okay, you could do something similar with the other one. We're not going to. But um, that's under math, and then it's the last option at the very bottom. Uh, because there is a log button and there is an ln button, but obviously those don't work if you have a different base. Okay, so um, let's take a look at how we can use these properties to expand something like the ln of 9y. Well, that just means that I can take the ln of 9 and the ln of y and add them together. Can't simplify that anymore, but sometimes that's helpful. In the second one, I am very tempted to do this. Right? Wrong. Okay, um, notice that there isn't a property up here where there is addition inside of the log. Right, there isn't such a property. So we can't distribute the log just because we like to. So make sure you don't do that. Um, you can distribute it when you have multiplication, like a number one, or division, like a number three. So for number three, we could get the log base three of one and the log base three of x squared, and then just subtract them, in this case because we're dividing inside of the log. Um, and then this two can go to the front. according to the power rule. And hopefully remember that um, this actually becomes zero because whenever we take the log of one, regardless of the base, I always get zero. So then my final answer is just negative two log base three of x. On the right, uh, we're going backwards, we're condensing. So now I have two logs that are being added together. So if I condense them into one log, I would have to multiply those two things. In this case, the five and the x. Uh, in the second one, I have a number in front of the log. So that will become a power. So it will be log of z to the one-fifth. Remember the one-fifth power really means the fifth root. So that would become the log of the fifth root of z. And finally, in the last one, I have a lot of powers, right? So this would become um, ln of x to the fifth minus the ln of x squared minus the ln of y squared. And then I could condense those all into one log 
and then it's x to the fifth is being divided by both x squared and y squared, which means both of those will end up in the denominator. I could certainly um, cross cancel some of the x's and end up with something that looks like that. Okay, so those are kind of a, a little more simple uh, examples. Let's take a look at some harder ones on the back. I'm telling you that uh, the log of two is approximately 0.3. With that information, we should be able to find the log of all those without a calculator. Let's start with log of eight. So can I rewrite the eight somehow involving a two? Yeah, I could because uh, eight is actually two cubed. Right, and just rewrote the eight as two cubed. We can use the power rule and that three would go to the front. And then I do know the value of log two, that's 0.3. Right, and so then I can just perform the three times the 0.3 and that gives me 0.9. Okay, so I use a combination of a little bit of thinking, logic, and uh, some of the properties of logs. Can I do the same thing to find the log of 20? Well, I can't rewrite 20 as a power of two, um, but can I write it as a multiplication of two numbers, like maybe log of four times five? Well, I could, but I don't know the log of four, and I don't know the log of five. Hmm, can I use two different numbers? How about uh, the log of two times 10? Yeah, because um, I, if I were to expand that, Using the product rule, this would become log of two plus the log of 10. I know the log of two, it's 0.3. And I do know the log of 10, because remember when the base, which in this case is 10, and the number are the same, it's just one. So this is just one, and so we get 1.3. So um, I could do the same thing for the log of 500. So try to think of either two numbers uh, using powers and multiplication and division. So things that are gonna multiply, divide, or power to 500. Um, I'll give you one, because there's a lot of combinations. But how about if we were to use the log of 1,000 divided by two? I'm just gonna write it as over two because I do know the log of a thousand, it's a power of 10, and I do know the log of two. So this would become the log of a thousand minus the log of two. Um, I could rewrite a thousand as 10 cubed, and then that's just 0.3. And so, um, the three can go to the front, and uh, log of 10, as we just said, was one. So this is just three minus 0.3, so 2.7. Okay, um, that last one's a little bit hard, but I definitely want you to be able to do something like the first two examples there on the classwork problems. Um, the next one is asking us to uh, isolate the y. So we have a lot of logs. So how about if we uh, move all the logs together on the same side? So um, I'm just gonna rewrite this as log of x squared uh, minus log of eight. Uh, the three I'm gonna move up as an exponent, right, using the power rule. So log of x cubed. I'm actually gonna move the log of y to the left. So I'm gonna subtract the log of y. And I'm gonna move the x to the other side, to the right side. I'm gonna have them switch places. That way all the logs are on the same side. And now I can actually use um, all those properties that we just learned, right? So um, these two are being multiplied together to be the log of x squared times x cubed and then it's being divided by these that are being subtracted. So they would both go to the denominator.
and we can certainly simplify that a little bit. It's the log of x to the fifth over 8y equals x. And I'm trying to get to the y. The y is inside of the log. We can make it come out of the log by switching it into exponential. Remember in exponential this would be base 10, so 10 to the x equals that, x to the fifth over 8y. Right, so I just reconvert it from log form to exponential form, like we did when we were solving all those logs. And then um, I'm just trying to get the y by itself. I'm going to flip the two fractions. And the reason why I flipped the two fractions is because I want to get the y in the numerator. And then the last thing I need to do is to get the y by itself. So I'm going to multiply by x to the fifth over 8. And I'm doing that because that way these can cross cancel. Right, so now I just have y on this side equaling x to the fifth over 8 times 10 to the x. And that's my answer. But I wanted you to, what I wanted you to see is how I, moved, I combine all of the logs into one log and then just use the, con the conversion from log to exponential to get the y by itself. We're going to do something very similar for the last two which involve finding the inverse of these two functions. Um, so remember the, in the way we find the inverse is to switch the x and the y first. And then we just isolate the y. So to isolate the y, I'm going to add 5. So move the 5 over. And then I'm going to divide by 2 to get the y by itself. So it's x plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 3y plus 1. And so again, um, I want to get the y by itself, but it's stuck in the exponent. So what I would do is to switch forms. Right now it's an exponential form, so now I'm going to switch it into log. As a log, this becomes log base 3 of the x plus 5 over 2 equals y plus 1. Okay, hopefully you're remembering the conversion. Um, we used it just a second ago. It looks something like this. Right, so in this case, um, that's my b, that's my y, and that's my x. And so it becomes um, log b, which is 3, of x, which is x plus 5 divided by 2, equals y. And then I would just divide by, or move the 1 over. And we can certainly do the same thing for the last one. It's just the reverse. Um, I have it as a log form, so I'm going to switch it into exponential. So, well, first I need to switch the x and the y. Right, so that would be the inverse. But now I have to isolate the y. So I would probably subtract 5 and divide by 2, so it actually looks very similar. It would be x minus 5 divided by 2 equals log base 4 of 3y minus 1. And so again, here comes the magic part where I convert forms. So um, in this case, right, uh, here's my b. Um, in this case, this is actually my x. And this is my y. So if I were to rewrite it as exponential, it would be 4 to the x minus 5 divided by 2 equals 3y minus 1. And then I would just move the 1 over and divide by 3. Um, so if I move the 1 over, and 
And then if, um, instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to think of it as multiplying by a third. So I'm going to have a third in front of the 4. And then I'm going to have a plus 1 third. It's kind of ugly. Okay. I apologize. This video is a little bit long. Uh, hopefully the next one will be a little bit shorter to compensate.